Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. It's Tuesday, December the 6th, 2011. This is episode number 220 of Category 5 Technology TV. Oh, wow. 220 hours. <laughs> and it seems like... No. <laughs> hey, for folks. Th- for those who, who go onto the site and say, Oh, I just found your show and I've been watching all the old episodes. 220 hours of it. That constitutes way more than 220 hours worth of Robbie time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But as far as on air goes, hey everybody! Even dreams about the show. Actually, that's not right. He, he, he doesn't actually sleep. He just <laughs> he's I like have the time for that. bunny. Huh? You talking about? I don't have time to sleep. Okay. Speaking of not having time, enough of the banter. I mean, really, we just don't have time, Eric. It's like it's yeah. like that episode where you were the uh, the the bunny from Alice in Wonderland. You just didn't have time. <laughs> no time. Go, go, go. You know, Robbie was all up in my face for being almost late, which I pointed out to him. There's a phrase for being almost late. That's on time. <laughs> and if the saturation is off tonight, it would be the, the fact that we didn't have a chance to, to change the saturation on camera number one. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, it's... A, it's, it's you know. I thought you were wearing a nice I gotta, bright red shirt. I gotta pay this guy more. <laughs> that's what I think it is. That's what that's what we I gotta do. I could have a one hundred percent increase in pay and still be broke. <laughs> still be making zero. My daughter would tell you what's uh what's a hundred times zero. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Wow. Hey, uh, check out our uh, our mobile website if you've got a mobile device, mobile.cat5.tv. You can scan that QR code there that uh, is very conveniently covering up the uh, the redness from what the What does frame. QR stand for? That is a uh, a quantized redugly. Re- <laughs> no, what is it? It's a quick response code. QR? I, I believe it's quick response. I was being honestly... I was making things up. I was making things up. Well, talking about things that are made up, this is what's coming up in the newsroom. Uh, Thanks to technology, now we can see the terrain under the Antarctic's thick ice layer. Ooh, it's pretty cool. Mm. Maybe your shredder isn't quite as secure as you thought it was. Kepler-22-B is the most Earth-like planet yet discovered, and it has a very Earth-like name. 6% 6% of the UK's net using households are part of a botnet. That's B-O-T. Wow. Um, a new update for the Xbox 360 brings the Metro interface and more multimedia to Microsoft's console. Stick around. These stories and others are coming up later in the show. Troy74 is in the chat room and uh, says he can't see his Christmas tree for your shirt. You know... <laughs> Do you folks remember our our friend John who used to uh, do the camera work? I remember John. His birthday, I think, is this Friday. Yeah, well, he was all up in my face for wearing a black shirt. A black shirt. That's when we had the the dark dark drape. Come on, that's pretty boring, Eric. Eric. Don't wear a black shirt. This is when you didn't have quite as much white in the beard. Right. So I wore a yellow shirt a few weeks ago, and I got accused of being somewhat canary-like. I had a green shirt. Robbie said, don't. If we use the green screen, you'll disappear. <laughs> I've got red. Oh, dear Says, me. Where are we? Canada. Yes. Canada. Hey, had fun on Friday night. I had fun on Friday night. Last, um, last time Eric was here, I don't know if you recall, but uh, I was kind of... I, I, I tend to give Eric a hard time once in a while. <laughs> Uh, in particular, you know, uh, well, I mean, he was talking a little bit earlier about uh, about coming into the studio two minutes before live for sound check and, and this kind of thing. Usually, when I he was does four minutes before live, Eric is a very talented musician and and see, notice how I build you up there a little bit so I can tear you down. He's going to turn badly, <laughs> go badly any minute. Usually, now. if he's gigging, he'll give me a call like like two minutes before the gig starts. This is how this is how it happens. Two minutes before the gig starts. Hey man, you coming out? And we had this talk about how you know, right. okay, well, I'm, I'm, 
watching a movie with Becca, or I'm doing this or that. I got plans for the night. Give me a bit more notice. Last week, Monday comes, and Eric remembered. Yeah. And said, "Hey, this Friday I'm gonna be gigging. See if you can make it." So what did I do? I made it. I lied to you, because I you said, "If me. you come out, I'll buy you a pint." <laughs> and I never got around to it. Never so. got around to it. But hey, we had a great time, and uh, we had a, a couple of uh, viewers who actually showed up as yes, well, indeed. which is very cool. And actually, you know, just sort of a little segue into that, there was a billiards table in, right, the, yes. in the venue where I was playing, and um, I believe it was uh, Rebecca and Krista Scott. Oh, okay. Taking Chris. on... Oh, when we were playing. Taking on Robbie and uh, Rachel. Rachel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Robbie and Rachel weren't doing all that badly until Robbie sewered off the black ball, thus we, handing the win. I, we won for about two microseconds. Uh, no, 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 no. Because no. then the white ball kind of... Close doesn't count. Followed it in. No, 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 no. Oh, you, so you, you're saying two minutes to, yes. to live doesn't quite count as... No. Okay. No. You uh, You lost. And uh, when, when Chris Eric, is quite pleased by that. She's yeah. actually going to take up a career as a pool shark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are pictures on our website, <laughs> category5.tv. Uh, and when Eric says, Rebecca, this is uh, Rebecca, a viewer from Barrie, uh, as well as Scott, uh, who joins us in the chat room as S.C. Lewin, who, uh, yeah. who were actually able to join us uh, for the evening. There's Eric playing his guitar. <laughs> and uh, had a you know a good little crowd, and it was a, it was a fun time. Eric did a, a great job. Did a great job. By well, the way. I, it was a fun know, night. Nobody got hurt. It was a good night. It, nobody got hurt except for you know. And, and I gotta say, you know, I I played in a lot of pubs, yeah, over the years, and seen a lot of billiards games, usually done in ten or fifteen minutes. You guys got really good value for your dollar on the pool table. A buck table. and a quarter for two hours worth of gameplay. You know, like it's amazing. Literally half an hour later, there were still almost all the balls were still on the table. I, I was, and, and the other guys are standing around. Hey, I've got a quarter on the table. I'm next. Look, we said right off the bat that we're, we've never done this before. H okay. Hence yeah. why it was kind of you know you got your regular pub going crowd and the geek squad. It was great. It was fun. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> it's like we are totally geeked out. Everybody's standing there. Literally, everyone's standing there with their mobiles <laughs> tweeting. <laughs> and then we get up and play a game of pool. We yeah. did not fit in that crowd all that much. Oh, you fit I'll in just fine. Say. It was just a little different. Uh, just saying. Just it was saying. fun. It was we fun. were holding up the table for sure. I, speaking of tweeting from my mobile device, celebrated this week 10,000 tweets. Yes, but... The <laughs> <laughs> nine thousand nine hundred ninety fifth through nine thousand nine hundred ninety ninth were somewhat drivelous. I would say. Is that a word? Oh come on! I thought that I would celebrate with a red balloon, which shows pale next to you. <laughs> what have you done? Why would you go and do that? Well, you know that was. This could be problematic. I'm wired in here. Uh oh, there's nothing on that tripod. Kicking <laughs> cameras. <sighs> Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point of view HD video camera built directly into a high quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com Why did you do this? <laughs> Look at what he's done. Well, I tried to uh, rub it on your hair, but... <laughs> Matches his shirt. Matches his shirt. Our little Christmas uh, Rudolph, uh, Run Run Rudolph, was a big request while I was at the pub the other <laughs> By the way, what do we got coming up in the news, Eric? Oh, we already talked about already that. Okay. That. Well, that's good. We've got viewer questions, I'm sure. <laughs> that well, totally. We did have a question. Me. Can you not get any static electricity off his scalp? And I said, no, no not static a whole electricity, lot. no hair. Not a whole lot. Sorry. 
<laughs> okay, well, we've got, uh, we're going to be comparing cameras tonight. I've got a couple of cameras for us to look at. It's going to be a lot of fun if you are considering buying a camera for, uh, for a loved one for Christmas, or uh, if you've got one on your own list, stick around. We're going to be talking all about uh, the difference between uh, standard uh, definition SD cameras as well as uh, your consumer grade 1080p HD cameras and also webcams that uh, that claim to be HD as well. So stick around. We're going to be talking all about that tonight. Uh, but we do have your viewer questions. Welcome to everybody who's joining us in the chat room, Category5.tv. So nice to see you. All right. Well, here's one from a fella named Charles, who goes by the name of Charlie. Hey, Charles Charlie. H. Vanderhyde, and that's pronounced Vanderhyde. And apparently there's three caps and two spaces. Just okay. telling you. Okay. <laughs> Um, he's uh, operating uh, Ubuntu uh, 11.10, and I installed 11.10 a day or two after it came out. I was able to install Ubuntu Classic Desktop then. Why can't I find that information now? I did follow your video and installed GNOME Classic, and that has helped considerably. Thanks for the video. I prefer Ubuntu Classic and don't want to reinstall 11.04 because I can't get dual monitors to work on it. Oh. I have an old HP ZE, that's ZE for the American folks out there, 4900 laptop. Thanks again for the video. Charlie. The, the, uh, the funny thing about that, uh, Charles especially, is that I, in fact, started having trouble with multi-monitor support once I installed 11.04. Uh-oh. But my scenario is a little bit different because one of my monitors is supposed to be horizontal, like a, a vertical monitor, whereas the other one is landscape, does not play nicely. You can rotate both monitors, you can rotate one monitor, or uh, you can leave them both landscape, normal. But if you try to rotate one, it will rotate both. Bad problem. That's only since 11.04. Nothing will fix it for me. I mean, I've gone through. But as far as... Uh, as far as your your uh, comment, I guess it's, it was more of a comment than a question, really. You know, why can't I find out how to do this? Uh, I'm glad that... No, uh, I think he wants to know <laughs> how to do it. Well, I'm glad that uh, my tutorial video that we did on the show here at Category 5 has been helpful in getting uh, like a GNOME 2-esque kind of interface going. We also looked at, uh, recently we looked at Linux Mint, which um, you don't necessarily have to look so much at Mint as this mate. Uh, which is a, a, a new desktop environment that has been kind of forked from uh, GNOME 2.32. So all of a sudden on GNOME 3, you've got a compatible desktop environment that is very, very much like GNOME 2 because it's, it's, uh, it's based on that. So we're going to be looking at cameras earlier. I just mentioned to you, Eric, that, uh, that that particular question that you're looking at, I'm going to save that one until a little bit later just because we're going to be talking about cameras. So set that one aside. Um, I just happen to notice here, uh, Gadwell, your question. So we'll talk about that later as well. Well, alrighty then. Mm -hmm. How about uh, one from uh, Gizmo at work? Hey, Gizmo at work. Does your boss know you're doing this? Does your boss know that you're <laughs> playing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so, so somebody was commenting on the balloon incident. I didn't realize we'd gone to commercial when I, uh, when I attacked your red balloon. I, I didn't realize you were going to be able to get it. It, like, floated away. Well, it floated away, and I'm attached here, but I was able to get it with my left toe. With your left toe? Yeah. This guy's like a monkey with his feet. Okay. <laughs> um, that's part of it. Uh, this is from Gizmo at work, who may or may not actually be working. He's running... Uh, must work for Bell. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> Linux Mint 10. Hi, mm -hmm. team. Hey, yeah. I would like to use the screen of my laptop as a second monitor for my main desktop. Is it possible to do so? Both computers are running Ubuntu slash Mint. Thanks. Ah, cool idea. Mm -hmm. We're talking about not, um, not doing a remote desktop to the other computer talking about not um, Synergy. Synergy lets you use the operating system of each computer. What, uh, what is being asked here by Gizmo at work is if we can actually set up that laptop as a secondary monitor. So in order to do that, 
legitimately. I mean, sure, you could install a VNC server on your one computer, and you could VNC to it from the laptop, and then you'd have a mirrored, you know, it would be the same thing on both monitors, which would be fine if, if, that's, if that meets your need. But in, in a case where you want to be able to actually move things over to that as if it was a secondary monitor on a secondary, uh, like just like having two monitors, um, that can be done because what you can do is you can share your X session. You can stream your X session to another X display. So, uh, for example, Any latency. No, no, okay. no. That's what's amazing. I mean, there's there's such a thing as XDMC, uh, XDMCP, which which allows you to you run, remember Run DMC. Oh, sorry, those uh, very very close okay. as far as how how cool it is for the time. Um, <laughs> it basically allows you to uh, to run programs on another Linux computer natively on your system. And now Windows Server 2008 is also in implementing similar kind of functionality with its uh, uh, terminal services as well. So things are stepping up there. Uh, XDMX, on the other hand, is something that you can install on both your laptop and your desktop computer. Okay. XDMX is going to allow you to then pipe your X display from the computer over to your uh, laptop computer. As far as getting that from the repositories, I'm pretty sure it's going to be there. Let's bring up Synaptic Package Manager. XDMX. There it is. Distributed Multi-Head X Server. It's a proxy X server that uses one or more other X servers as its display device. So you see, uh, just from the, the wording, you can kind of tell what that does. Um, the one thing that you want to be mindful of, though, of course, what you're doing is you're piping your X session over to that other display. So that can be um, a security risk. If somebody in your internal network, for example, let's say you're doing it through LAN, which is the most likely scenario, that's the safest scenario, uh, and you have somebody connected by Wi-Fi and they're able to packet sniff uh, and they're able to intercept that connection, then they could hypothetically, let's say you've got up on that laptop display your online banking and you type in your, your uh, you know, your whatever, your credit card number or something. Um, so then all of a sudden somebody could sniff that packet and get your credit card information. Because you're really, what you're doing is you're, you're pushing your, your X session, your keystrokes, your mouse movement, everything over to that monitor. So be wary of that. Use SSH tunneling uh, to, to resolve that, uh, which is a little advanced. Not really something that I can demonstrate just now. Could possibly, if you run into trouble, if I haven't given you enough to, to do some searching on, online, um, you could certainly, you know, pop me another email. We could put together, maybe pre-record something. That would be something I could pre-record, but mm -hmm. a little more, kind of like when we did the uh, Unraid build. It's like it's too big to do in a show, except if we pre-record it, I could probably show you. But give it a go. Uh, get online. Search for XDMX in... Uh, your favorite search engine, but it is available in the repositories, but out of the repositories, you know, it's not really going to do anything for you. You need to know how to actually establish that, uh, that X session and, uh, and start piping your X display. So good luck. It's a, it's, it sounds like a complicated thing. It's a little complex in that it's borderline advanced user-esque. Um, you need to know a little bit about Linux and, and not be afraid to break something, but uh, you're not going to really break anything. So. Oh boy! With yeah. that disclaimer, <laughs> but you you could kind of break it, but not really. I mean, it's easy to go back, right? Data are the thing about which you should be worried, not not the actual build. <laughs> Keep a backup. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Scott Lewin. Hey, uh, just I uh, mentioned that the white balance is hey, uh, is off tonight. Um, I knew it was my fault. Wow. <laughs> Listen, your ring doesn't match mine. Don't you be giving me that. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could, I'm going to try this. Uh -oh. we've, we've never done this live, and this is extremely dangerous to do this live. Oh, that feels so much more saturated. Wow. Bam! That's what I'm talking about. See, that, my friends, is how you work Wirecast. <laughs> that would have... Oh, now my shirt is orange? Absolutely, guaranteedly crashed the old server. 
Guaranteedly. Guaranteedly? Yes. How do you spell that? Sorry. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> are you Are you ready with another question? I thought, of course I am. Okay, because we've got about 10 minutes here, and, and I would love to... Uh, they, we have so many bams in the chat room right now. <laughs> <laughs> chat room is like, well, bam, Darby bam, says, bam, B-A-M. My shirt is still red to him. Yeah, it's quite red. It's red to yeah. me. I could, you know, desaturate the, the right half of your screen. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> questions. Get your questions in the chat room. We're just having a good time tonight. Uh, it's category5.tv. There's our website. Jump on over. We've got the chat room right up there available for you. Uh, and uh, tonight we are going to be looking at uh, different kind of cameras and, and doing things like that, like getting the best picture out of a consumer camera. We're going to talk all about it. So if you've ever wanted to webcast, if you've ever wanted to do something similar to what we're doing, or if you want to start a YouTube channel, we've got some great information for you tonight. Of course, uh, the question came up uh, in the chat room. Are you guys using Wirecast? That's the question. The answer is absolutely. Yes. All right. Telestream Wirecast. You can download a free trial at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. I'd encourage you to check it out. That's the software that we use, and we're going to be talking all about it uh, tonight as well because you need to know uh, about compatibility for different cameras and things like that. So, All right, you've got a question. I'll let you take it away. I laughed like a radio DJ, but I don't know how that was. You do everything like a radio DJ. Everything. Well, years ago, no, no, actually. In a world. <laughs> years ago, back Every when the, the wreck of the Edmund world. Fitzgerald was... On the charts. You even name drop like a radio DJ. And uh, I walked over. My buddy and I had a little transistor radio. It was about this size, and we could get CKBB, the AM station in Barrie. And uh, they were playing. The, when we got there, we could see through. Uh, oh, anyway, yeah. uh, Scott Harris was the DJ. He let us in, actually. Name but, drop. See? But... Uh, Oh, no, he, he, I'll, t <laughs> I'll tell you other stories <laughs> off air, but uh, he, he got let go from most stations he was at just for fun little antics. But this one didn't actually get him fired. But we were listening to the Edmund Fitzgerald, and uh, we could hear some weird noises in the background. You know, it's about, if you don't know the song, it's about a, a ship that uh, sinks and, and all uh, all lives were lost. And it was, you know, it's it's Lightfoot wrote quite a documentary okay. type song. Yeah. Anyway. We hear this weird noise, and there is Scott Harris into the microphone with a straw <laughs> blowing bubbles into his cup of water. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'll go on to more questions. So that's what, what you're talking do. about. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I don't do that like a radio DJ. No. I may do that if you uh, do a swimming story or something. This is why I don't give you a straw, because I know you would. Yes. So this <laughs> is from uh, Gadwell. Hey, Gadwell. Our friend Gadwell. Um... I thought I would just share a screenshot or two of how Robbie's blog looks inside of the Windows 8 RSS feed aggregator as it currently stands. I must say this looks very nice in person when using it. The first screenshot is how the titles look in the main app. The second is how the articles look inside. The load from left to right, or they load from right left to right like a book. Bear in mind, there is no customization in this build of the OS on this app, except the ability to add and remove feeds. Have fun on the show. Can you get that up on the? I'm just yeah, I'm just working on that. Here All right. we go. Okay, I've got it. Okay, so this is your headlines in Windows 8. Yeah. Cool. So there's so there's my blog. It's nice how they've squared everything off and removed all the drop shadows. It's not. <laughs> I, I, I'm detecting a slight hint of sarcasm. Well, Metro to me again, once host, again, Robbie Ferguson. Well, Metro again looks very touch screenish to me. Okay. And I know that's the intention. I know that's the intention. So, okay. So next up was my blog itself. There it is. So that's all right. It now, how is that as far as contrastiness goes? Bad shaving job on that guy in the picture, though. Well, you know, um, but that kind of looks a little. I guess you could theme it, right? But does that not look fairly white? Let's take a quick look here. That is indeed pure white, my friends. That would that would just be... Ow. Can you like set it to like a... I don't know. CCC? That's going to be gray, gray, gray. 
No, that would be like just an off white. A little paler. Well, why don't we the get white into something a little more subtle, bright. like ecru or something, and do some other. Just like a cyan. No, a bright, blue. bright cyan. No, okay. Okay, so. It looks nice, though. Thanks for sending that in. I'll, uh, I'll throw you 50 viewer points just to say thanks. And thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Pardon me. Thanks for subscribing to my blog. Appreciate that. Okay, well, we have another one. Awesome. This one's from Old Guy Jim. Oh, hey, Old Guy Jim. Yep. Somebody said uh, when I was out uh, playing in one of the pubs, you know, you shouldn't be calling yourself Eric Kid anymore. You should be calling yourself Eric Old Guy. <laughs> anyway, so this is from Old Guy Jim. And Old Guy Jim is running Ubuntu 11.04. Great. Robbie F., I have a problem with two windows hard docked to the menu bar at the top of the screen. One is a wine program that is maxed out to the size of the screen and cannot be made smaller. The other is a LibreOffice writer styles window. It can be made larger or smaller by dragging the lower left hand corner of the window, but it cannot be moved away from or moved right or left along the top menu bar. It is stuck to the top left corner of the bar. How does one go about freeing up these windows? Mm. I've tried finding any wine registry entries or Windows location scripts with no luck. Thanks, and a great show last week. Old Guy Jim. Okay, so, Jim, I am uh, just kind of figuring out what exactly you're asking for, and I think I might have it. Let's just, like, are you talking kind of trying to emulate so i i uh, this is the only wine program that i have installed it's called notepad but there it is okay so is that what you mean it's kind of like up over top of the and you can't get it you can't move it you can resize it but you can't do anything with it jim if that's the case or if that's what you're trying to do is is move a window where you've lost the ability to grab the title bar and move it what's really cool on linux is if you hold in your alt key the ALT key on your keyboard, and then click anywhere in the window. Hold in Alt, click, drag, and you'll see that you're able to move that window. No problem at all. So you no longer have to grab the, he the, the title. You can click anywhere in the window. I know you can't see my mouse cursor there, but I'm actually clicking in the white area, holding in my Alt key. I hope so, that's what you mean. So, old guy Jim, we'd like to hear back how yeah. that went for you. Hoping that's what you mean. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to head on over to our newsroom, which is, in fact, Eric Kidd. I am and, uh, the newsroom. You are the newsroom tonight. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll let you take it away. Interesting stuff tonight. All right. Well, here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Thanks to a jolly old elf, the North Pole gets a lot of news coverage at this time of year. We wanted to change things up and talk to you about the polar opposite, the South Pole. Have you ever wondered what Antarctica would look like without all that ice? Scientists have produced the most detailed map yet of Antarctica's rock bed. Less than 1% of this, uh, this rock base is actually visible above the continent's frozen veil, but technology is now allowing us the first ever glimpse at what lies beneath. Called simply bed map, this startling view of the landscape beneath the ice incorporates decades of surveyed data acquired by planes, satellites, ships, and even people on dog-drawn sleds. Wow. That's really cool stuff. That is pretty cool. Okay. Almost every office has one. A document shredder and a bin filled with strips of paper, many containing confidential information. But how safe is that information? As part of a... DARPA run competitions, that's D-A-R-P-A, uh, to see if it could be done, a team of computer programmers from California calling themselves, all your shreds are belong to us, that's you dot S, <laughs> have developed proof of concept nice. softwares that say shows that computers can, in theory, reassemble these shredded documents. Their software works by matching up individual shreds based on minuscule clues in each shred. The contour of the tears, a barely visible watermark, and traces of 
writing, for instance, and can work incalculably, I can't even say incalculably, faster than a human (laughs) undertaking the same task. A decent commercial shredder can reduce a sheet of paper to more than 400 pieces that yield a total of 1,276,800 possible two-piece combinations for one single-sided sheet. Most office documents are a lot longer. Many are printed on both sides, and the uh, the bin containing the shreddings could hold the remnants of hundreds of pages. To reconstruct a document with their software, a human user clicks on an individual piece that has been ingested into the software, then selects which side of the piece to check for a match. The software then recommends possible matches from the remaining unmatched pieces. This continues until all the pieces have been matched up. It's like a virtual jigsaw puzzle. That's amazing. One of the programmers involved in the project says, a lot of these shredders are maybe not as secure as you thought, and maybe you should get a better shredder if you want these really and truly not to be assembled. That's crazy, though, because you look at this, and this is done on a, a piece of paper that was shredded with a confetti shredder. Like how wow. you need something that is going to incinerate if they're able to put this back together. Wow. It's amazing. I thought they had this on CSI. Well, that, but that's... <laughs> this is incredible. That's, that's fiction, Eric. Apparently this is not. Real. Every tool they have in those shops is actually real. Of course it is. Okay. The fact that they can do DNA checks in like 30 minutes. It's all real. The group only wanted to prove to themselves... Oh, Eric Kidd Garby says it's not true. The group only wanted to prove to themselves that it could be done, but walked away with the $50,000 reward on Friday for solving all five shredded pages before anyone else. Wow. Wow. Okay, moving on. Astronomers have confirmed the existence of an Earth-like planet in the habitable zone around a star not unlike our own. The planet, Kepler 22b, lies about 600 light years away and is about 2.4 times the size of Earth and has a comfortable temperature of around 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, It is the closest confirmed planet yet to one like ours. Kepler 22b lies 15% closer to its sun than the Earth is to our sun, and its year takes about 290 days. However, the planet's host star pulls out about 25% less light, uh, puts out about 25% less light, keeping the planet at its balmy temperature that would support the existence of liquid water. However, the team does not yet know if Kepler 22b is made mostly of rock, gas, or liquid. But, wow, that's pretty cool. More than one million households in the UK are believed to be harboring criminals inside their family PC. Hmm. <laughs> Might small fit. Now, I did see a magic show where a girl got into a box that didn't look like she should fit. Did you see Zoolander? Yeah. Yeah, that was just files were in the computer and you couldn't find them. Yeah. Uh, A large-scale global study suggests (laughs) 5 to 10% of all domestic computers are regularly linked to criminal networks called botnets. The figure suggests that about 6% of the UK's 19 million net-using households are enrolled in botnets. Hijacked PCs could be sending spam, attacking websites, or surrendering bank details to criminals. Topping the list of infection rates were Greece and Israel, where about 20% of all broadband subscribers are thought to be regularly recruited into a botnet. Wow. Microsoft is rolling out a big update to its Xbox 360 consoles in an attempt to make the console more about entertainment in general rather than just games. Microsoft has signed up 40 media firms to provide both live and on-demand movie and TV services for the console. The update also lets people control their TVs by taking, talking into the Kinect motion spotting gadgets. Apparently it carries X-Men. <clears throat> Just to notice. (laughs) The most noticeable change made by the update will be to swap the Xbox's familiar tabbed interface for the so-called Metro look that is based around tiles. The Metro interface is also expected to be the default for Windows 8 when that debuts in late 2012. About 35 million of the 57 million Xbox consoles around the world are connected to Xbox Live and have begun receiving the new update 
earlier today. Get the full stories at the Category 5.TV news slash newsroom. The Category 5.TV newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash and Simple 10 with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category 5.TV. For the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. Just to mention, you can reverse this, flip it back, reverse it, if you are watching this on the RSS feed, you look to see your name. Just noticing that. Side note. I'm Eric Kidd. I did. I just wanted did. to see if... Who am I? Who am I? I have it on the inside of my Mr. Briefs, too. Okay. Back of your shirt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you by GardenGateFarms.com for certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice. Keep your immunity up. It's GardenGateFarms.com. Also, download the free online game, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. And now for my radio voice. And the Pogo Plug, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. Very cool device. That allows you to uh, basically access your media from any device, anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. I love the Poco Plug. Just saying. Just it saying. Does. Hey, chat room, how are you? Hey, Garby. Rachel Shu is joining us in the chat room as well. I saw Krista earlier. Uh, we've got Scott Lewin, who joined us on Friday night. Scott, good to have you here. Nice to see you. Nice to uh, meet you in person this, uh, this past week. It certainly was. Yeah. And he didn't throw anything at the guitar player, which was nice. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah he, it's always uh, good when that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> old Guy Jim makes a mention in the chat room. Thanks, uh, Old Guy Jim, for the update. Says, Robbie, in case you didn't see my previous post, holding in the alt key uh, did the job in moving those two windows around. Thank you very much. And Sweet. Old Guy Jim, cheers. And I appreciate the, uh, the comment there. Good stuff. How's don't, that for a turnaround, just eh? just cheer. Buy Robbie at Guinness. It would make him nicer to be around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, is that how it works? That's how it works. Ah. Uh, somehow oh. now I'm thinking about Guinness. Anyways. <laughs> Did you want to go to... Uh, what do you have? Well, you had uh, Garby's Oh, okay. Question. That question let's set that aside. Your, no, no, no. We're setting that we're gonna, aside. Uh, but I'll give you a chance to... A chat room, I'll give you a quick chance to, to get your question in if you have anything quick to say. Uh, right now, you know, the chat room is just overwhelmed with Guinness is wonderful, says Slip3D. <laughs> Look at what you started. Look at what you started. Oh, Unbelievable. This would be a really bad time to say. I haven't had a beer in a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just see what happens. That's Guinness is going out of business, Guinness. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Cheers, Scott. Appreciate it. <laughs> Dave Maydu. I agree. I agree. Hey, you can check out the chat logs if you want to know all the humorous things that we're laughing about tonight. Check out the chat logs at category5.tv. Visit the show notes page for episode number 220, and you will see there that uh, we actually offer the IRC logs. Cool. Yes. Well, what kind of TV do you have? I've got, like, just a standard kind of CRT 27-inch, and I'm just waiting for it to die. No, Are you at uh, HD at this point? Yeah, I, I do have yeah. an HD TV. 720p, uh, 1080p? 1080 yeah. Um, you know, and, and where I really notice a big difference is uh, watching a hockey game. Oh, mm. my goodness. What size is the TV? <clears throat> I can't Just remember. that big? Is it like a 52-inch? 48-inch? I, I think it's 48. 48. Yeah. Good size. Um, yeah. It's, uh, <clears throat> it, it's pretty good. It's funny, though, with the, uh, the HD signal, I find with the uh, just the regular TV speakers... Mm -hmm. Like on the the HD hockey game, yeah, I hear all the crowd noises and the boards and all the oh. other stuff. But if I put on the, uh, you need like surround sound, the surround sound to get like the I, announcer. I can actually person. hear the announcer properly. Hmm. Um, so it's mixed differently. Yeah, that's that's a that could be something to do with surround sound, or they're trying yeah. to give you the ambiance. Well, they certainly so. are. You know? Yeah. My thinking. Well, what's interesting is that people come up to me quite often and say, "Well, what what's better, 720p or 1080p?" And you think immediately, 1080p, that's the answer, because it's higher resolution, right? What, uh, what we need to do is kind of compare apples to apples in that a 720p television is usually going to be smaller than a 1080p television. If you had a 48-inch 720p and a 
uh, a 48 inch 1080p, then of course, which one's going to have the better picture? It's going to be the 1080p. Mm-hmm. So understanding that basically your your television, your, your whatever uh, monitor device that you're using uses pixels, or if it's an interlaced device, it uses lines in order to generate its picture. And the 1080p, the 720p, that basically tells you how many lines are on that screen. So if it's 720, it's 720 lines of picture. If it's 1080, it's 1080, p, uh, 10, 10, uh, 1080 lines, right? So with a uh, television that's 32 inches at 720p, you're actually getting a higher resolution than, say, a 56-inch TV that's 1080p. Oh. Because that 56-inch TV has less lines per inch or in old sense or when it comes to computer monitors or uh, print you would think dots per inch right so how many dots can be fit within a, 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 a square centi- or a square inch so as you get bigger sure you need to increase the resolution because otherwise the pixels are going to stretch or the lines are going to be stretched they're going to be bigger you're going to get a perceived kind of bit of a blur effect going on so to, to think of it does that make sense? I mean, logically, I mean, you get bigger, and so yeah. the, the pixels are going to b- get bigger. I, if you could imagine, I mean, and this isn't the case, but because most things are interlaced as far as televisions go. Um, but you do have the progressive scan uh, units as well, which I'm not sure if they're, they're kind of like a, a whole bunch of lines per pixel. But um, so if you imagine that you've got so many pixels, so say 1920 by 1080 for a 1080p TV at 52 inches versus... Uh, 12, what is it, 1280 by 720 for 720p on a 32 inch, those are pretty much the same, you know, inch for inch, it's going to be about the same resolution. So, so we got to keep that in mind when you're looking at stuff. If you, if you're going to buy a big TV, yeah, you need to go with 1080p. If you're going to buy something that's a little bit smaller, it really doesn't matter because you're not perceptively going to notice the difference between 1080p on a smaller screen and 720p on a smaller screen. So, interesting anyways. So tonight what I wanted to show you is actually the, the quality difference when you're looking at cameras, and, and in particular, thinking about uh, broadcasting, because that's what we do. And if you're interested in creating a broadcast of your own, if you want to go on to YouTube, if you want to uh, go ahead and grab a copy of Wirecast from cat5.tv slash Wirecast, that's the broadcast software that we use here at Category 5 TV. If you'd like to get into that kind of thing, then here's an opportunity for you to see in advance kind of what the difference is with different kind of cameras. Uh, Garby says uh, that some even say 1080p on smaller screens degrades quality since it uh, can't fit all of the content into the space. It might actually squish some. And I guess there's a possibility of that, but these are digital displays, right? So they are going to, um, uh, how would you say, they're going to downgrade the stream to 720p effectively, the down conversion, right? So it's going to actually remove uh, any extra lines, more likely, than squish them, quite possibly. Probably depends. So we'll, we'll arbitrarily uh, remove certain parts of each picture? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't no? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. you're not going to lose like part of the picture. Oh, okay. Like it's not no, going to disappear off the screen or anything like that. No, have a little bit less information. A little bit less data right. per, per line, I guess you would say. I still think in terms of pixels and dots per inch because I'm, a, right. you know, I'm an RGB uh, rasterized graphic <laughs> guy on web, right? So, um, so it's a little bit different as far as scenarios go. But if you can imagine, I mean, you take this square and then you blow it up it's bigger rectangle. and it's... And it's gonna it's gonna change the resolution, right? You've seen when you when you zoom in on stuff. So by getting that extra little bit of dots per inch or extra resolution, you're gonna get better picture on a larger screen, but not necessarily needed for smaller screens. So for tonight's test, I've got this old b- bad boy here, and I want to kind of give you an idea of price as well, so that you can kind of have a, a bit of an idea as to what the comparison is and why I'm showing you this. This one here cost us. There it is. 125 bucks. I mean, it's an SD camera, nothing exceptional. What's cool about this one, though, is that it's got FireWire output. Ooh. So this goes directly into the back of your computer, and you can do live streaming from this camera. Very, very nice. I got a FireWire. 
but you can't do live streaming from that. You can take pictures and you can right. record video. You can record video on this, but what's ad- yeah. advantageous about it Sweet. is it allows live streaming. That's what FireWire gives you on an SD camcorder. And there are DV camcorders as well, which will give you a mock 720 by 480, uh, like a 480p signal, which is uh, lower than 720p, but it'll be an HD signal and it'll look pretty good. Usually they're going to come with a, a good lens. But then you're looking at you know a thousand or two thousand dollars for something like that that still has FireWire. This one, a hundred and a quarter, it has you know FireWire output, so it's pretty good. But that's SD, which means standard definition. Then we've got the Microsoft LifeCam Cinema HD. That's a 720p camera. Okay, 720p. Right. So remember that that's at 32 More than four inches. Eight. Yeah. yeah. But at 32 inches, that's a good HD camera. Then I've got a consumer camera. This is a Canon, okay, so good name, Vixia RF R, uh, HF R10. This camera is uh, is pretty decent. It's 1080p, promises 1080p, but it's a consumer We're camera. About high, high definition. <laughs> yes. And you're putting on your Everything is kind of low definition, not even standard <laughs> definition. <laughs> Difference with these is that it's got HDMI output digital output, okay. okay, as opposed to the FireWire. FireWire, brilliant. You can plug in a FireWire cable, plug it into your FireWire card, start streaming. This one, HDMI. Computers don't have HDMI inputs. They have HDMI outputs. So you got to also put in an HDMI to, uh, to PCI Express card. That's where the Intensity Pro comes in, okay? That's a black magic card. So all in all, this is going to cost you $350 plus $100. Right, 450 bucks to get this one working. Okay, I should mention that the LifeCam Cinema 720p is about 35 bucks on Amazon. The Microsoft Cinema, uh, the next one that we're going to look at, is the LifeCam Studio. Pardon me, not Cinema. This is the the latest for Microsoft. 1080p is what it boasts. So we're going to see what kind of quality we get from this. Both of the Microsoft cameras are actually connected by USB 2.0. So of course you're going to have some trouble if you've got a slower computer. You're gonna, obviously you can't do HD with a, an older computer. It's got to be a pretty die-hard system. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look uh, real quick at what these look like. <coughs> Here again is the SD camera. This is the one that uh, we're plugging in through FireWire. Here it is in slow motion. You can see a lot of blurring there, eh? Yeah. And you cannot, I mean, the, the resolution is, is so low. I mean, it looks good. But you can't, you can't read any of the decals on the card. Now, here we are with the 720p HD webcam from Microsoft, the Cinema HD, USB 2.0 interface. Here's a frame-by-frame frame slow-mo. And you can see it's, it's pretty clear. Now, we're, we've got a lot of speed there, right? So keep in mind, we're not going to get crystal clear pictures. That's not the intention. It's just to show. Now, as a freeze frame, once, once it's stopped, you can clearly read the decals. It's got nice saturation. Here's the actual Canon camera. So this one costs uh, roughly $350 to $400 more than any uh, of the webcam options. Okay, Saturation looks good. There's more blurring than there was with the 720p. Uh, frame rate is excellent, and everything looks as good as can be expected. Uh, and stop frame looks really good, looks very clear. Now, here's the 1080p HD webcam from Microsoft, the LifeCam Studio. And this is, of course, uh, recorded in 1080p. We're looking at it now in 720p, but it still gives you an idea. idea. Now, slow motion, you can see it's, it's very clear as far as each frame goes comparatively to the other ones. Now, there, I end up just moving it back a little bit. We pre-recorded this segment just but uh, because this is hard-focused, so... You'll see that it goes into focus, out of focus a little bit, and makes sound perfect when focus you push there. The car yes, <laughs> you go ahead then. <laughs> so, comparatively speaking, we're looking at we start at one hundred and twenty-five dollars for the lowest quality, worst-looking camera that we have. That's the SD. Okay, stepping up one. Let's let's jump over to cat5.tv/bh. For B and H photo video, please use that hot link because that's going to uh, let them know that people did click on uh, on their site through us. At their website, I'm just going to do a quick little search here for, uh, let's say the Canon. This was the Vixia HF R10. 
which they don't have. I looked up earlier today on uh, Amazon. It was $350 on sale, so keep that in mind. The Blackmagic Intensity Pro PCI Express card, which is required in order to make that happen. There it is. Okay. I said about $100. I'm actually off by a long shot. $189.05. Uh, so keep in mind, this camera is going to cost you easily, you know, let's say 500 bucks ish okay, to do the, uh, that's the Vixia. That's this guy here. Back here. Now, comparatively, I think the 720 was awfully close to that in quality. So let's look at the Microsoft LifeCam Cinema HD. And you'll see this particular camera is currently priced on B&H, cat5.tv slash BH for $42.99 good stocking stuffer. Here's the disadvantage. Notice that it is a mountable camera, but it does not have a threading for a tripod. If you plan to mount it, that one does not have it. I've modded mine, it and it like is it possible to mod it. It clips onto something, though. What's it clips onto the back of your onto? monitor, typically. Oh, okay. Right? It's very flexible. It works really, really well, but it uh, it doesn't have, un unfortunately, it doesn't have a, a quarter-inch threading, so you're unable to mount that on, uh, on your tri uh, tripod. Okay? But then, stepping it up, Let's look at the LifeCam Studio. Okay. Had a cat called Tripod once. This one has, yeah, yeah, has a threading. Notice the threading, okay? So this is the last camera that we looked at. 1080p is what it boasts, and it does provide a good picture. In our video, it looked a little bit undersaturated, but that can be touched up with the drivers, as you saw earlier tonight, uh, as I did that live with the uh, camera that we're using. That one is currently marked down to 5782, cat5.tv slash bh regular price is still under 80 bucks so what i'm is it usb two or three yeah both are usb two okay so you need to have a powerful computer to run hd video that should be obvious and you may have trouble running your webcam at full hd if you don't have a powerful computer but that said you can get the 1080p cam and you can actually clock it down to 720p to get better performance if you want. You can clog it down even further because Skype only uses VGA quality video in most cases. So you can clock it down to 640 by 480 or 720 by 480 or something like that if you want the widescreen. So that's just to demonstrate that, okay, well, here's a good option for five, possibly as high as $600 if, if prices, uh, you know, I was looking at this on sale. Um, or there's, there are two options, and I know that they carry the Microsoft name, but that's okay. They're good products, uh, and we're looking at full 1080p or 720p, respectively, uh, to the, uh, the studio and to the uh, cinema HD. So looking at that, now we do have that question. I'll let you grab that question from uh, Gadwill, if you will. All right. Here we go. Um, Garby. <laughs> Okay, running Windows, Linux, and BSD. Hello, co-host. That's me. Well, hello, <coughs> co-host. And Robbie. Thanks, Thanks Robbie, for the blog post about the Microsoft LifeCam Studio. About that little device. Do you know of any software in Linux that can actually record 1080p output from that device? I see that the software bundled with it will only work up to 720p, probably Windows only as well. Thanks True. for any help in locating some fine piece of code. Yes, the software that's bundled with this will only do 720p because you have to have commercial software, right? Okay. Um, if you're looking to use this on Wirecast, the cinema currently works flawlessly with Wirecast. If you don't believe me, this is the cinema that you're looking at right now, okay? Microsoft LifeCam Cinema. That's the, the 720p option. This one here presently is not compatible. That's December 2011. Is not compatible with Wirecast. They are working on it. Check out my blog, as Gadwill says, cat5.tv slash blog to find out more. Gadwill, this won't work on Linux. Plain and simple. It says right on the box. You walk into the retailer, you pick up the box, you look at it. It says requirements. System requirements. Continued. Windows 7. Sorry, Gadwell. Take that. So, you know, if you want to save money and get a cheap webcam, you're just, you're not going to be able to do it on Linux, are you? Or are you? Because here I am. <laughs> you know, whatever. Okay. What, what operating system am I running here? I'll give you a hint. Yeah. 
All right. Welcome to GNOME Desktop. GNOME. Applications. That's well, different from the Genome Project, right? Sound and video. Cheese webcam. That's a very expensive piece of software. It costs nothing. Wow. Okay. It's a heck of a deal at twice the price. Kind of like my pay here at Cat5. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, this is actually a Microsoft LifeCam studio. You're seeing it streamed through our LAN to our broadcast system. So, of course, you're not going to get the perfect 1080p signal quality. Uh, but it is fully capable of 1080p in Linux. Plug it in, reboot your computer, or, you know, I could figure out how to restart the services and stuff. But what I had to do was plug it in, reboot the computer, and it came on perfectly. No issues. All right? No issues. No issues. So it is possible. There you go. You know? Oh. Who's that handsome smile. guy sitting with you, Rob? I'm not smiling. Well, we got oh. A, oh, okay, sorry. I'll smile. There, okay. Got a picture of you. Okay. That's going to be Did an I embarrassing blink? one, you know? There you go. There you go. There you go. You saw it here. So there you have it. I mean, it works I don't on... don't have the bunny ears on. At least you don't. Yes. Works on Windows, Linux. Not going to work on older versions of Windows. It'll work on Linux, for sure. Will not, apparently, work on Mac. So what, i got to get rid of my Win95 box? Sorry, dude. I don't think you're going to be able to do 1080p HD video Darn. on your Windows 95 box. Darn it all to heck. <laughs> the choice words you can't oh, use on TV. Dear. Cat5.tv slash BH. That takes you to B&H Photo Video. They're a great supplier. That's where we buy a lot of our gear uh, for the show because the pricing is awesome. Uh, but please do use that link and at least visit them and, and check things out. Um, but those are... Uh, I hope that gives you some food for thought. Pardon me. Keep in mind, again, Was my blog. Was thought coming back on mm, you? Something like Sorry. that. <laughs> Cat5.tv <laughs> slash blog. Okay? Find out more information about the uh, the uh, LifeCam Studio. And I think, actually, I've got a hot link. Cat5.tv slash... Just testing it just to make sure that I've got it right because I posted it a long time ago. Slash LifeCam. Cat5.tv slash LifeCam. Tells you more about getting... The Microsoft Life Cam Studio. That's 1080p video on your Wirecast, cat5.tv slash Wirecast, for under, I mean, regular price, 80 bucks for 1080p video to broadcast live. But you can still use it with Cheese or with uh, your video recorder or the provided software will record in 720p if you want to make a YouTube video or something like that. Well. Or you can purchase a piece of software that works. On Windows, you can use uh, an application called Virtual Dub. And Virtual Dub is free of, soft, uh, free of charge as well. And that will allow you to record in 1080p on your Speaking Windows of machine. Being free of software. Uh, <laughs> is that what you were going to say? I think I, I tongue tied there for a second. Yeah. Yeah. So does uh, Cheese come with any tinkering tools? Tinkering tools. Tinkering tools. Tools with which to tinker. None at all. None at all. I mean, what do you expect? It's free, right? It's free. What do you want? What do you want from me? Hey, I'm sorry. Never mind. Nothing at all. Uh -oh. I'm so kidding. I mean, this is cool. Whoa, that red shirt's really working out nicely now. Yeah. My kinda, name is Eric. Kind of feel like we should be doing a music video, like <laughs> just oh. like that. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, Rachel is out of control. I'm no longer well, I, speaking no with doubt. her in the chat room. And no I'm doubt. back at the same. Yeah. Two of them. Psychedelic. You know? That is psychedelic. Cheese will work with any webcam, essentially. Any. I mean, I say that. How about Vertigo? Vertigo? Bottom left. Okay. Okay. Is it the 60s again? Whoa. There we go. Got a picture. Just for you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, in the chat room. Category5.tv is where you'll find us, and uh, we love having you join us on the site. Hey, Those Spectre 1055. Goggles. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Scott Lewin actually uses Cheese to test any webcams just to see if they uh, if they will work and finds that it's very reliable. Definitely. Works great. And like I say, plug and play. 
plug in the camera and it works. So it works. Any questions for us, real quick? We've got about uh, you know very little time, but if there were any questions about uh, HD video, uh, certainly you can pop us an email live at category five TV. We'll be happy to answer your questions, and uh, certainly keep you know go to my blog cat five TV slash blog. Go to uh, the life cam blog entry cat five TV slash life cam. Reason I want you to do that, even if you don't want to become a broadcaster, I do. We have these cameras. You can be a broadcaster when you grow up. I want to be a broadcaster. <laughs> I would like to be broadcasting in 1080p. Wirecast doesn't doesn't presently support these cameras, okay? But I priced out going 1080p, and it was it was like thirty thousand dollars. He's dropping everything tonight. Thirty thousand dollars to go 1080p. These, I, I mean, you pick them up. Regular price on B and H is eighty bucks each. So if we were able to get these to work in Wirecast. We will be 1080p here at Category 5. So get onto my blog, cat5.tv slash life... Uh, yeah, life cam. That's it, life cam, okay? And you'll see how you can contact uh, Wirecast, Telestream, and request that, hey, you know, maybe you could add support for this particular camera. Kind of get your voice uh, heard, get your, your note in there, s link back to my blog and say, we really want to see this show go 1080p. Could you uh, add support to Wirecast? All right. <laughs> Not that I'm abusing my power or anything, but send money. I'm just kidding. I'm so kidding. Well, they Everybody. offered something else if you promise to share it with me. I'll share it with them. What is it? Does it sound like Winnis? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> have a fantastic week, everybody. It is so nice to have you here tonight, and I hope that you have uh, a f I hope you had a fun night, and I hope that you have a fantastic week. And we will see you next Tuesday night. I'll bring you a new balloon next week, Rob. Thanks, man. Okay. Make it up to me. All right. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.